Imagine a monster, not the one under your bed, but a super monster that could swallow the whole earth without even breaking a sweat. A monster that destroys anything that gets too close. But it's not a mortal monster, no. It's a black hole. You might already know what a black hole is, but the truth, we don't really know that much. We can't see them, we can't get near one. So all we can do is make observations when we finally catch something, and then make a theory about it. The only thing we can do is look at how it affects the objects around it. So let's start at the beginning, what a black hole is. A long time ago I was in class, and I was wondering about black holes and our sun. Could our sun become a black hole? So I remember asking my teacher, and she said, First of all, our sun is a G2V star. The G2 refers to its surface temperature, and the V refers to what part of the star's life it is in. A V is for the main sequence. The sun has a mass of 1.9891 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. That means it's not big enough to create some of the heavy elements. While it does create carbon and oxygen deep in its core, it needs to create stuff like iron and silicon before it dies. Its core would then collapse into something so small and dense that it would have an immense gravitational field. Of course, this wasn't enough. I need to know more. So you can work out the gravity between you and a black hole with the formula F equals G M1 M2 all over R squared. Where M1 is the mass of the black hole, M2 is your mass. Also you have G, the gravitational constant, and R is the distance between you and the black hole. But the incredible thing is, a black hole's gravity is so strong that it affects particles without mass, like photons. There is also something you should be aware of, escape velocity. If I was to throw a ball in the air, it would come back down. So if I was to throw it again, but harder, it will still come back down, but it will take longer to come back down. So if we can throw a ball with enough force so that the velocity is high enough so that it won't come back down, we have reached escape velocity. We can actually work it out. Escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2gm divided by r. It comes out at approximately 11.2 kilometers per second. So if I could throw a ball at 11.2 kilometers per second, it wouldn't come back. You can see how the formula for escape velocity is proportional to the square root of m. So if there was an object with such a large mass, its escape velocity would exceed the speed of light. You can also see that escape velocity depends on how close you are to the black hole, i.e. the closer you are, the faster you have to go to escape. Now black holes are known for having escape velocities that are higher than the speed of light, but what I'm saying is that there must be a point where the distance of the black hole is large enough that the escape velocity comes back down below the speed of light. This point is actually known as the event horizon. It is important to know that the event horizon of a black hole is not a physical part of the black hole, it is the point where light can't escape and from this point onwards it just appears black. The radius corresponding to the event horizon from the centre is known as the Schwarzschild radius. After the first theorist who solved Einstein's equations of general relativity for a situation of a collapsed object, Mathematically, the Schwarzschild radius is given by 2 times the gravitational constant times the mass of the star divided by the velocity of light squared, or c squared. This is a fairly simple relationship which means that the Schwarzschild radius scales proportional to the mass of the star. If the sun was to turn into a black hole, it would have to be compressed into about 3 kilometers in radius, which is about the size of a small town. But a more realistic situation is a star must have a core mass that is three times the mass of the sun, where the Schwarzschild radius is actually nine kilometers. In the theory of general relativity, any star that's life ends with a core mass of three solar masses, or larger, must become a black hole, because no known force can prevent it from collapsing to within its own event horizon. This is generally what it takes to get a big ball of death in space. So what does a black hole actually look like? There are obviously many artist interpretations where they look like big funnels or black ball where it's surrounded by colourful gas. And if they are a funnel, where does it come out? A white hole maybe? So many questions about black holes. The funnel actually comes from when you draw a black hole on a grid, a special kind of grid. It is the classic analogy where space is like a sheet on a bed, and if you put weight on it, it'll make a dent in the sheet. So you have something that has a mass so large that it would make a massive dent. kind of looks like a funnel. That is where it comes from. 
As an object moves into the dent, it will roll its way round the edge of the funnel and then drop into the middle. No one can say conclusively what a black hole actually looks like as you can't see it, but scientists run simulations, gravity tends to shape matter into spheres, so they suggested that inside a black hole is just a sphere of matter. A white hole is an actual thing though in general relativity, except it only actually makes sense in the maths part. When it is applied to any kind of situation, it just simply never exists. In the theory, they appear all over the place, but they would disappear as soon as matter appeared on the scene. Except Hawking radiation doesn't say that matter which falls into a black hole will come out of a white hole. In fact, Hawking radiation says that black holes are not actually black at all. As you might have guessed, Stephen Hawking came up with Hawking radiation, and he said that black holes emit a faint glow because of quantum physics. Yeah, it's back again. It is the idea of matter and antimatter being created and destroyed almost instantaneously. However, on the event horizon of a black hole, one half of this couple can fall into the black hole. What Hawking realised is that the normal particle has enough energy to escape, and so the antimatter particle falls in. When it does fall in, it will fall into the centre and annihilate one of the particles in the middle, thus giving the effect that the black hole has lost mass and then mass has appeared on the outside of the black hole. This means that that particle can escape and be free again. So over a long period of time, this will slowly eat away at the black hole and eventually kill it. The black hole will die. The orphan particle is then on the outside and can be seen as radiation. This is Hawking radiation. So what happens is while the black hole is just sitting around, it is slowly losing mass. So unless it eats something, it will start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As it gets smaller, it gets hotter too. This temperature increases until eventually it just explodes, releasing the rest of its matter and energy to its surrounding. This is when the idea came around that black holes are galactic monsters that chew up universes and spit out fire and brimstone. What was suggested by Stephen Hawking in 1974 was that black holes should emit a faint glow. However, this glow is so weak that it can't be detected here on Earth. You can't just look at the centre of a galaxy and find a black hole, you have to look for the effects that it has on the objects around it. Just as in the Milky Way, astrophysicists and astronomers track stars near the centre of the galaxy and watch them as they get flung around a particular point. However, there is so much radiation coming from that area that it's hard to see things. What we can do is make a deep radio map of the area, which will show us everything that has mass. However, there's a lot of objects that have mass, and we can filter it out by getting rid of certain frequencies of light, but it is still very difficult. This means that Hawking radiation was confined to be a theory forever. However, in physics, if something is too distant or bizarre, we create it here on Earth. At first, it doesn't seem like the smartest idea to do tests on a black hole on Earth, but hold on. In 2010, a group of Italian physicists created an artificial event horizon. Not the whole black hole. By tweaking the refractive index of fused silica glass. This made a temporary barrier which acted as a moving event horizon. And so what they found was streaks of travelling photons that have many of the properties expected by Hawking radiation. These results have been disputed widely as some of the observed properties are the exact opposite of Hawking radiation. But the Italian setup isn't the only setup which can be used to prove Hawking radiation. In the Technion Israel Institution of Technology, researchers have been working on a model black hole based on Bose Einstein condensate, a state of matter consisting of atoms supercooled to the point where they begin to behave collectively on a macroscopic scale, but still according to the bizarre quantum rulebook. Using this, they could create a group of atoms that all acted like one. Using this material, the researchers were able to create a black hole model that steals sound instead of light, known as a sonic black hole or sometimes a dumb hole. The idea was then to create particles travelling at supersonic speed so that sound couldn't keep up with the particle anymore, effectively removing the sound from the particle just like photons disappearing into a black hole. But it isn't a completely sad story. Black holes are where everything happened. Just around a black hole you have huge amounts of activity. You have stars being ripped apart into accretion disks. You have insane amounts of heat and light going around the black hole. You have jet streams that produce by a black hole. You have particles coming out half the speed of light being shot away from the black hole. You even have stars being born around a black hole. So black holes actually have a lot going on. What Stephen Hawking did with his theory 
of Hawking radiation was connect two theories that were previously disagreed. The really big and the really small have come together in perfect harmony. That is a video on Hawking radiation. Make sure you stick around for the next video. Thank you for listening. It's been my pleasure. Try for now.